So in the last video, I left off saying we could, if we wanted to, create a new user and then log into that user with the same SSH key that we created before. So let's see how to do that. Now I'm already logged in as root, so I'm not gonna use sudo here, even though I could, but I'm just gonna write to the add user command. Now there is a user add command, which is a little bit more complex. So I'm gonna use the add user command, which is simpler. It does a bunch of work for you. I'm just gonna add a new user and I'm just gonna say add a new user named Fidelifer. All right, so it's adding the user Fidelifer, adding a new group Fidelifer, adding new user Fidelifer to group Fidelifer. This is all the work it's doing for you. Creating a home directory at slash home Fidelifer, which is the typical place that you'll see user files. And then finally, it's asking us to create a password for this user. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now it asks me for some extra information. I always just leave this stuff blank. It's not really used for anything. Okay, so now there is a user Fidelifer. I could even sudo sue over to user Fidelifer and I become that user, great. Okay, I'm going to exit out. I'm back to my root user. Okay, so I'm going to go to my home directory by just typing cd, or I could type cd with the squiggly here. It's all the same. That brings me to the home directory of user Fidelifer, which if you do the pwd command, which stands for print working directory, we can see the current working directory, which is my home directory, this little squiggly, which is home Fidelifer. And we'll see we have some stuff in here. Bash history, bash logout, bash rc. Bash history keeps a history of all the commands you run as this user. Bash rc, you might know, is some basic setup where you can do things like add aliases. So for instance, I like to do alias ll equals ls leh. And we can add a line like that into bash rc, and that would always get used whenever you logged in. Okay, so I've added the user Fidelifer. I use sudo su, which is a command I can use as user root or any user that can use sudo to change over to user Fidelifer. So let's go back. I'm gonna add a new tab here. I'm gonna cat out that SSH key we created in the last video. So .ssh, and I want id sfh start pub. We only want the public key. The private key should always remain secret. The public key doesn't need to be. So I'm in use user Fidelifer. I want to add that public key to the authorized keys files here. I don't have a .ssh directory, so we can make that. And then within that, we can create a .ssh authorized keys file. So you can just create this file if it doesn't already exist. And remember that it is plural. Okay, I'll just paste in this public key from the SSH key. I will log back out. I'll log back out of here again, because I just went back to user root, because user root changed over to user Fidelifer. And we can try to log in again but instead of user root, we'll use user Fidelifer. And now this will log in without prompting me for a password because the SSH key has no password. And that's how we know that this SSH key is actually working to logging into user Fidelifer. Okay, so while I'm user Fidelifer, I actually want user Fidelifer to use sudo to be able to do uh, certain commands, any command that requires editing a root file or changing configurations or restarting services. So for instance, if I wanted to sudo vim and edit the file etsy ssh sshd config to edit the ssh daemon, which we're gonna do next, I would type in the following command. And I'll type in the password for user Fidelifer. Remember, this is not the ssh key password, which doesn't have one. This is the user's password that you set when you're creating the user. And this says Fidelifer is not in the sudoers file. This incident will be reported. And all this means is that I cannot run sudo commands for user Fidelifer because the sudoers file has not defined Fidelifer as a user who can use sudo. So in Ubuntu, there is a very easy convention to make any user a user who can run sudo. And that is to add the user Fidelifer to a certain group. So if I just say groups, we'll see that the groups that Fidelifer is in is just Fidelifer, and you can even do groups Fidelifer to say, show me the groups for user Fidelifer. User Fidelifer is in group Fidelifer, but I don't have any other groups assigned to me, but I can do that. And what command we'll run to do that is the user mod command. So we're gonna do the user mod command. We're gonna change the group of the user, and I'm using a capital G here, and we'll do A to append. So this is the same as doing two flags, capital G and A. We'll say a capital G to append a new group to the user in addition to user Fidelifer. If I use small g, it would actually replace user Fidelifer. In this case, I want big G to append a secondary group to user Fidelifer. And then we have to figure out what group we want to add here. So it might be something like sudo, it might be something like root, it might be something like admin. And then we apply that group to user Fidelifer. So let's actually see, I'm going to uh, exit here and log in as root. And as user root, we're going to run a certain command, and that is vsudo. Vsudo uses vim to edit the sudoers file. 
And in this case, it's actually not Vim, but it lets you edit the sudoers file, which is Etsy sudoers. And here we can see some stuff here. All right, so user root is set to all, 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 all. And I cover this in some other videos on Surface for Hackers, but basically just uh, this just says that user root can run all commands as sudo, it can use sudo commands. So this is a user. Anything with a percent sign here is a group. So anything in group admin can also run any command as sudo. And anything in group sudo can also run sudo command. So we can take any user and add the group admin or the group sudo to it, and it will automatically be able to run any commands using the sudo command. And that basically means it can run any command as root. It has super user privileges. So I'm going to stay as user root. So we'll do user mod dash a to append the groups instead of specify the group specifically. Capital G to add as a secondary group and not replace the primary group. We're going to say group admin will be appended to user fideloper. So now if I do groups fideloper, we'll see that fideloper is part of group fideloper, which is its primary group, and it has a secondary group admin added to it. So let's exit, we'll SSH again as user fideloper, and we should be able to see that I can use sudo su. So I'm gonna say sudo su, and this should just let me become user root. So if I type in the password, and I actually have to type in the password right, I become user root. And I'll exit to go back to user fideloper, and then I can just run sudo commands as I need, entering in my password as I ask. So maybe I want to do sudo service ssh restart or something like that, it's just gonna work. Okay, so now I'm user fideloper, I'm gonna do sudo vim etsy ssh sshd config, and we'll talk about our first security thing. Well, our second. The first security thing we did is make a new user other than root, because what we want to do is make it that we have to log in as a user other than root, and then we can disable root login. And what that allows us to do is to make it so that no one can log in directly as root and start doing stuff in the server without them having to enter in a password, which you don't have to do with user root. Every other user that attempts to use super privileges, in other words, has to run the sudo command to edit stuff, will require a password to do it. All right, so we're in the sshd config file, the daemon configuration file, the SSH server that runs here that lets us log into the server, and we can see there's a few things here. Now, first thing we're going to do is see that we have public, public key authentication set as yes, so public key authentication, of course, is set as yes. And we'll search for the word password, and I'm going to say password authentication is no. So we actually are not allowed to log in using a password. We have to use public key-based authentication. In other words, we have to have an SSH key set up to log into the server, not just a password. And that's a more secure setup because you need the SSH key file in addition to any password you set an SSH key if you set one to log into a server. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is actually say permit root login no. So we're just going to totally deny the ability for the root user to log in directly to the server over SSH. And then with those changes, we need to do sudo service SSH restart. Now let's exit. I can log in as user fideloper still. It's going to let me because I have the SSH key set up. It's not going to let me log in as user root. Permission denied, and it says public key because it attempted public key authentication, but it got denied because user root cannot log in. So if I want to be user root, I have to sudo su as another user, such as Fideliver, who is allowed to use sudo, and of course we see I need a password to do it. And I'll just continue my issue of not being able to put in the password right the first time. Okay, so that is creating a new user, setting up the SSH key for that user, and then ensuring that the root user is not allowed to log in any longer, and ensuring that we no longer allow password-based authentication. We only allow SSH key-based authentication. So off the bat, we have some security-related stuff, making our server more secure.